Hi, yeah, hi everybody, welcome to Calgary, and sorry about that. Um, if you want, describe you want, um, put your thumbs up you want, um, like if you want, um, share, whatever. It's gonna go white right through the whole four things Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, Twitter. So, yeah, um, there's a reason behind this. Um, it's, it's a story I want to share with you how I moved from. Been from Melbourne to Bendigo, yeah. But before I start that, I want to show you some pictures. I wore a mask today. Yeah, this is my mask I wore. It's a basic one. Um, I've been told nurses, like, um, doctors use them. It's very basic. It's nothing major. But this is before I used it. Happy little me. Yes, happy little me. And then another picture of me. I didn't like this one, but I thought I'd share it with you. And this is what happened after I wore it. So I'll show you the picture of me wearing it. It's upside down, sorry about that. But if I turn it up the other way, it's going to reverse again. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So you can see I'm wearing it outside, doing the right thing. Wore it down to the shop. I wore it for about an hour. So yeah. This is me when I was in the toilet. Yeah. And this is what I looked like when I got home. Yeah, so I thought I'd share them with you. Because there's something behind this, and I won't share it with you yet. But I just thought I'd just show you the picture so you can see it for yourself. And it's not just me saying whatever, right? So I'll leave that to a bit later. Now, the thing is, like I said, I'm going to tell you a story about me moving from Melbourne to Bendigo. So, um, I did the massage course in Harleyburg, um, I failed because my dyslexia, um, it's not, nothing out of a reason. I passed flying colours with the hands on stuff. I did tell the staff that I do have dyslexia and I need assistance with her. Um, for some reason they thought, no, I won't need it, right? I don't know why they thought it, they might have thought I faked it, I don't know. I really don't know why. But yeah, I failed it. So what happened through it all, I had issues with my house. It's a, it was a unit actually, and this was in heart vertebral, sorry. And I remember I had this hole in the, wall, in the floor, sorry. And I remember saying to the real estate agent, um, you need to do something about it if there's a hole in the floor. The first time, but it took about two weeks for a month to fix it, that's okay. Um, I don't know what happened, I have to admit, I don't know happen, what happened with it, but it happened again, no, I reported it back to the real estate agent. It didn't get fixed, right, um, it didn't get fixed, um, but through this, um, I wanted to move house. And I said to staff, I wanted to start from Philomarie Catholic Home, so I started going back to Philomarie, I think it was 2012, something like that. And I said to them, yeah, I want to move house, okay. Um, but through that, I was the hole in the floor. This was in a, in the bathroom, and um, it's, got, it's getting worse. I keep on telling the real estate agent, it's getting worse, so we need to do something about it, right? So that's okay, and then I think it was the summer or or I am um, spring something like that. Um, we got a whole heap of bees coming into the house. Um, I don't know if it was bees or wasps. It was one of them, and I keep on saying to the we say, yeah, "We got bees in the house. We need to do something about it." Um, they didn't do anything about. It. I showed them the pictures. They didn't do anything about. It. I said, "Right, that's it." I'll go out and get a bomb, uh, a bee bomb thing, whatever you call it, the one that um, kills all the bees and bomb um, the in the house. So I got one of them, I did what it said, you know, you put it in the house, you open up the tin, you close all the windows and go out for about four hours. So I went down to North Flint, because it's close to Visible, it's in Preston in Victoria. So I did that and then I... Um, Remember, I showed the pictures to the real estate agent, didn't do anything about it, like I said. But I'm saying to, I got someone in from Philip Marie doing, I practiced my massage, right? And this was about, I would say, two to three months later, right? And 
I mean, Janelle, Janelle said to me, what's wrong with your bathroom? <laughs> what's wrong with your bathroom? Uh, it's got a hole in it. Um, it's laid to water. I told a real estate agent. They don't want to do anything about it. So I just said to her, look, it's okay. When they have inspection or they want to sell the house, they're going to have issues. <laughs> That's all I said to her. It's okay. They can do with it later. The longer they live, the longer they leave it, the it will be, right? So, but I'll say a month or two later, I'll get a letter or some an email, something like that. And we'll say, say, agency, uh, we want someone to come in and look at your house. So I think they were selling it at that time. I think they said it to me. So, of course, I said, fine, it's okay. I've kept it in my head. I pre warned him about the floor, pre warned him about the bee hole. Yeah, so I pre warned him about it. I have said it to him about three or four times. The guy comes into the bathroom. <laughs> oh, I need to come back, kind of thing. So he watched out. I don't know what he did, but I don't know if he contacted the real estate agent or a health and safety person. I have no idea what he did, but. He kind of was a bit freaked out with it, right? <laughs> and it was really, really funny because, I'd like I said, I pre-warned him, you know, you can listen to me, are you done? And if you don't, you have to learn it the hard way. So that's okay. Um, so what happened, I think a day before this happened, someone came in and fixed the, the floor. That's okay. And, but we still had the hole in the, on the, in the wall because the bees, because the bees were pretty full on and I'm telling you it was pretty full on. If I had the pictures I'll show you on, but they were pretty full on. So what happened, uh, he said, um, he showed the lady in, looked at the house. I don't know what she said, but that's okay. But I got a notice two months. Um, I think it was two weeks notice that I need to leave um, because of the floor and fix the house and that thing. And he said, oh, you can come back. But then in my head I thought, well, two things. If this lady's going to buy this house, if she want to want to move in. But two, if you're going to do this to this house now, what's going to do later on kind of thing? So I thought, no, this is probably a good opportunity for me to move to a country town. I always loved the country and that's pretty much why I chose here because I had two options. Well, at this stage, I had two options because I'm, I don't know what you all know, it's probably from the dress, how I dress it. You do know I'm a cheapy, but not a cheap enough to I respect the health and safety of things. So I uh, looked in the um, Hedge Beach. That was good, but expensive. I can't, things were over $300, and now I can't afford that. So I had to look in between 150 to $200 places. So I went to um, Willisie, if you probably heard it, the young boy who went missing, I got done a reading from, I got him mom, that area. Um, I looked at there, there was a house there, I liked it, but for some reason I didn't get it. That's okay. So I came to um, Bendigo and I looked at some houses. Two of them were way not worth to live in, into it. Um, it was a real health and safety issue. Um, you just you wouldn't move into these places, so I thought I'd share that with you. But there was two other places. There was one in um, across the, in Bendigo, um, Barking Street, across the way from my route, um, Salvation Army. Right? Um, I applied for that in another. I think it was two other places. I got the one in Baker Street next to the um, Salvation Army. So. Um, applied for, I uh, handed in my, oh I didn't really have to hand it in there, it did it for me. Um, the new when I was moving, so what I did, um, when I went back to Hot Reservoir, clean up the place, stayed the night there, uh, put all my stuff into a storage room, um, place 
in Preston called Miller's and um, that's okay and I knew like in a week or two I'll get my bun back and I had enough money to put my bunny money my um, rent into the house but I didn't have enough money for the bun so I thought to myself wait to I've kind of worked it out where I can just go from bun to this new place yeah but it didn't quite work out that way and this is where the story kind of yeah, and, now, and there's a reason behind this. So, I go, I keep on going back to the house here in Benigo because I gave the real estate agent that address so my bun would go into that place, um, to that address. So, I'd been doing this for about two weeks. The house, that real estate agent knew I wanted it. Um, so, they said, yeah, this, when you get your bun, you can put the money into that so that's okay and so what happened um i didn't get it when i should have had it so i went into the realization and for some unknown reason and probably by me being psychic um she goes you yeah, don't have it i know and i said to her i should have it i don't have it so what happened it came to about I think it's the fourth, third or fourth day into it, because I keep on coming up here every day. I I just turned to the real estate agent lady and said, look, this is, gonna, this is what's going to happen. If I don't get it in tomorrow, people are going to get in trouble for this. Tomorrow came and I got it. Yeah, so, yeah, that's okay. Um, um, but some reason through the this, I didn't get to keep the house. I can't remember if it was the money was just didn't come in how it should be coming in kind of thing. And on top of that, um, it was near November or December kind of time where the holiday pay, um, what do you call it, that holiday, when you pay to go on trains and that, from Melbourne to Bendigo rates went up. So instead of having $40, it was $60. I did have a job with Phil Marie for three, day, three hours a day. I would only get $60 a day for that. And because I was only working there two days a week, I said to Kath, and then I can't do it. It's not going to happen. It's, it, no, it's not worth it to go down to Melbourne get paid for $60 and that's going to be going back into this transport thing. So that's okay. So what I did, um, I, I, create, I must admit, it was the most stupid thing I ever did, but yeah, I must admit. But so that's what happened because what my fear was is I move here, pay the bond, then I'll um, get more of my stuff from storage, bring it back up here. As you can see, it's not working right. So what happened, um, I stayed at the house for about a month or and a half. Um, the lady knew I had issues. Um, she was quite supportive. She helped me with certain things like going on the doll, um, going to the, um, I don't know what you call it, a place where you can apply for your bond. And yeah, it works out well that way kind of thing um at that this stage i had no money on me i think i only had ten dollars on me at this stage this was going on for about i would say two months yeah um so that's okay so what happened i i'm gonna say i'm probably getting in trouble with this but i'm just gonna say it i went to a seller link service that will help you with, um for work that's okay. Now at this time, I did pick up with Benigo itself. It's connected to the media. I don't know why, but it's new it connected to the media. Um, and it is. <laughs> Very much so it is. Um, you look at Coba in Benigo and you will see it. Yep. So, um, so that's okay. I go to this um, service um, to go, you know, you need... Um, um, what do you call it? Um, working um, interview clothes. That's fine. They gave me a tip. I um, as 
a um, a certificate of how to call it for twenty five dollars to go to a second hand shop and get working clothes, um, interview clothes. I was kind of grateful for it in one way because if you don't know me by now, I'm not really good with dress codes. I'm not very good with dress codes. So they can for that in that way they were good because they can tell me what I can wear, what I can't wear. So that was good. But they did that and so that's okay. Um but I still had no food. Well, I had food because the lady at the corner, Tess, um, and there's a story behind that too I'll share with you in a minute. Um, she introduced, no, was it her or the real estate? Well, one of them introduced me to a place, um, St. Francis of Paul. They help you with the rent, your bond, that kind of stuff, and they give you food. So that's where I went. That's okay. And then, so that's okay and that's fine. Um, through this process, when I'm waiting for the bun and the food and that, I late to my last place and all that kind of looking for work, I got kicked out of this house. That's okay. So, because I know certain things, and I'll get into this later, I moved into this lady's house, Tess house. Um, that was okay. I didn't have to pay for it, but I think a week I was looking at places and jobs. That's what you do when you don't have anything, right? So that's fine. So I um, then um, a week later have the um, selling pays starting to come in. So I get a certain amount of money each fortnight. So that's all right. So I start giving her money. That's fine. So, yeah, so that's fine. What else can I say with that? Um, yeah, so what happened, I don't know why she did this, but each, each, I'll say four, not all monthly, she upgraded the money to $200 a fortnight. This is just, no, $200 a week. And this is just for a room, okay? That's fine. So for, if I'm going to pay $200 for a room, maybe I should start looking into a house. So I start looking into a house. I've got a share room um, with a pl another place, cheaper again. Um, so that's okay. And then I moved here. Yeah, and that's where I am now. So this is okay. But there's certain things in this I want to share with you. And I thought this is, this would be interesting for you to see. Now Tess was, like, she um, works for I don't know if she works, but she knows people called Channel 10. Um, I only know this because, and she doesn't know I know this. She will know this now because I know she's on Facebook. Um, I saw a Channel 10 fan or car, whatever you want to call it, into her driveway. So that's a very clear sign that she knows people from Channel 10. Um, if you don't know what Channel 10 is, if you're overseas, um, I'll just look up when you will get it there. So, and it's a net, a channel, not, yeah, a radio channel, it's a channel. So that's okay. Um, then, the other thing is, um, I like going to churches sometimes. Not always, but sometimes it's something different kind of thing. And so I went to the South Asian yeah, Church and I swear, the guy who's not in charge of the church, but the next person under. That's if you watch the show Blue Healers, um, you probably know the lady in it, Liz McHugh. She's um, I don't know if you get it overseas yet. This is the show she's on there called How to Stay Married. Okay, it's that lady, but the boss in Blue Healers, he helps around the salvation now in church. I think it's the next person under. So that's okay. So that's another reason I know Bendigo is connected to the media. The other thing I want to share with you, Tess, too, I thought this is good. Like I said, I'll probably get in trouble for all this, but I think this is important. When you, you know, it's media or networks, you know, you know, it does go both ways. That's all I'm going to say. It does go both ways. You can have one with the, the other, right? And this is why I'm doing all this now. So with Tess, when I moved house, from her house to this place, I I knew she was up to something, right? So what I did, 
I knew I had to move all my stuff. Um, and I thought I'd do it by hand because it was only like half an hour from her place to this place, right? And I thought to myself, it's probably the best way to do it. I've got time, I don't, I'm not working. Yep. So what I did, now like I said, I knew she was up to something. So I got one lot of stuff and I moved it to this house. Then I came back and she locked the whole, whole, whole house, the gates and that. So when I got went there, and something else happened, I can't remember, but to a point I just rang up and said, look, this. I had her key with me, the inside house key, and I, kept, I kept it for that reason. And I said to Tess, do you have two choices? Let me in, or I'll call the police. Simple as that. I don't bullshit around. I just don't bullshit around. If I can say, if I say something, I'm gonna do it. So, so I said that to her. So I got to the house and she let me in. Oh, well, actually, she didn't let me in. What happened? She said, "Go oh, on, call the police. Um, if you're gonna do it." And I just looked at it and I'm like, "You blush for lady." I didn't say that to her. I knew she was blushing. So, what she did? <laughs> she got all my stuff and through that side. That's okay. And I just move all my stuff back to this house. That was fine. But no, like I said, it works well for right here. So that's okay. So what where was it got? Oh Tom from the Healers from yeah the real estate agent. So that's okay. So yeah, so what else did I just want to talk to you about? Um I think that was it. Um just I uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But I was just want to share that with you. Um, the other reason I want to share it with you, um, and why I did this fellow, if you had to hear me, my voice is changing. Now, that doesn't normally change. Um, if I'm really tired, or I want to get into it, but it gets that time of the month, yeah. And it happened yesterday, because I went, to a job in the film. I do have another job, so don't worry. I do have a job, but I went to a job in the film, and the guy asked me to wear a mask because Victoria's chose to, well, I should say the media chose to, everyone had to wear the mask, it's the law now. And the funny thing about that, this Monday coming, there's a show called Mask singing, I think it is, and they dress up in there. <laughs> and the first thing I saw, when I saw it last night, I thought they would be good for Cory Bar. <laughs> but yeah, and you get it, you have it in America, but it just been, this happened all together. But as you can see, my voice is changing, and this is what happened yesterday after I did the ma um, wore the mask. And that's why I've chose the pictures, because um, look, I get the whole, if something is really happening, we do need to look into it, yeah. But we need the facts. It's as simple as that. We need the facts. Um, I don't know, you guys are overseas, but here in Australia, the white food farm, I think it was February, three types of symptoms, all different. One was, um, I don't know, I think it was fever. Um, what was the fever? No one knows at this time. Fever, um, something else, something like that. The second one was, um, you don't have to have a symptom. You can just have it. <laughs> yeah, well, like it's a cobra. Secondly, um, it, well, the, what these two ones with, if you're close to 1.5 minutes away, if you sneeze or touch a person, you can cut the catch it, yeah? But you won't know it, because you might not know you got it, yeah? This, and later on it was in, these things look like chicken pox. These marks on your body look like chicken pox, right? I get all that, yeah? A few different symptoms. Um, later on it went into a cold, I mean, you want to know is, um, you know, it's high and low fever, uh, 
difficult, yeah, that's that one that was difficult of breathing, um, what's the other one, um, stuff like that. Um, like I said, you know, then now it's, yeah, it kind of like, it kind of sounds like, yeah, um, what do you call it, um, the flu sense, you know, yeah, high fever, low fever, I'm assuming it has to be over 1 point, I mean 75 degrees, I mean 77, no sorry, 37 degrees, so that's when you know you're sick, stuff like that, um, so, like I said, four different, different, um, symptoms related to COVID-19, then, you see your Prime Minister, and I kind of get this, but then you see people with the Prime Minister, and I saw it on the news, I don't know what they were talking about, probably related to COVID, because it was at Channel 9, and that's where I clean, and the, um, the, um, um, what do you call it, um, the sound's not up, how it's on mute, right? And, um, so I don't know what they were talking about, I'm assuming it related to COVID, but I could be wrong, um, you got the Prime Minister and uh, the person signing with no mask on. Here we are going around the whole Australia. I'm saying this way because this is where I am now. We have to wear masks. You can hear each other through the mask. Uh, when I was in the interview yesterday, being the girl cleaning company, we all wore masks. I could clearly understand every single one of them, or two of them, so it was just two of them. Um, so, I really don't know why that kind of, that, that's hypocrite itself. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm putting this out there. Um, but at the same time, and it, I, I have feel it, and I'm happy that you can see it, that my face has changed because of this mask. And I guess to me, I am grateful for it because what I was going to do with this, and no one knew about this, I do returning and making sacred um, crystals and stones. And I was looking into buying a mask for it. So I thought, because I have to wear a mask, maybe try these and see how I go with them. I think I might be allergic to them. <laughs> As you can see, my voice is changing a bit and I feel a bit funny here and I feel a bit more puffier. So I think I'm allergic to it. Cause in a, so in a way, I'm kind of grateful that they, they made me wear it for that reason because I know I can say, I don't think it's going to be useful for returning in jam club stuff. So I have to look into something else. But saying that too, um, has anyone thought about that? Um, this is material. I mean, if you go into a hospital and you have to wear an, an, um, an, an uniform, like a nursing uniform, I think it's made out of cotton, well, back in my days, when I, mean, I was 18, so about 30, 30 years, um, they all had cotton. Um, I know I was allergic to cotton, um, so we had to have cream for that. And it was just one of the things. But has anyone thought about that with these? I mean, if you're gonna go out and say, do it for a show, and I've, I'm, I'm seeing all this related to shows, like I just proved to you, vinegar is a media thing. Um, I, with the gem club side of it, there are media people in there, connected to the media. Um, Janet, um, she's related to Simon Baker. Um, I'll probably get in trouble for this. But at the same time, she's not my client, so I can say whatever I want with that. Um, and at the gym club, they were talking about wearing masks. They were talking about hygiene and health and safety stuff. But to, <laughs> it's pretty weird because I keep on saying to her, if you want to do the right thing with um, one new club, I didn't have this back then, and I do work with I did work with people with disability. I said to them, "You really need to get ramps. You if you get ramps, you'll be perfect." But they didn't want to listen to that. But they wanted to talk about glasses, masks, gloves, um, 
stuff like that. And I thought, how is that going to help with your business? Well, it would, but not as much as having a ramp in the head price. So I thought that's really interesting. So I thought I'd share that with you too. And I'm thread the whole free um, um, test. Sound of course, I mean, so test um, um, salvation army, the gem club, the wood club. They're all connected to 10. Um, and it's not the cost of Cobra. There's certain things that came out before that for me. And I can mm, cope. I mean, Channel 10 maybe. Like I said, Simon Baker, if you watch him, here in Australia, we will reconnect. He was connected to 10 when uh, Madness was on. Yeah, so that kind of thing. Like I said, Janet was in there. She's related to Simon Baker. I can't remember in, I think it was in Marriage Right, but yeah, so that I thought that was interesting. And I said, like I said, the real estate agent, so Fashion Army. Tom and Tom's the guy was on Blue Healers, so and Tess is not people from Channel 10. So, as you can see, um, yeah, so that's why I'm doing it. So, I thought, like I said, I was fine, but if you can see this picture, this is before I went down to the shops. Clear, stay, happy, nothing wrong with me, right. Um, as I said, it's upside down, but I'm wearing a mask, so I'm not saying one thing and doing something else. I am doing it. But as you can see, this is me in the toilet. If I turn it upside down, up the right way, it's still going to be the same. I will try to do it. There you are. <laughs> it's upside down again. But you can see my face really puffy, and I feel it's puffy now too. Um, what else was I going to say? This is me when I got home. Side to side. So you can see it. Can't you? you can actually see my face changing. Um, but I bet you the media didn't think of this stuff. Um, people are allergic to um, certain things. Um, I, I'm i doing this for that reason. Um, you know, actions... Sometimes speak louder than words, um, and this is why I did the story. None of these guys are my clients, so I'm not. I should not get in trouble for this. This is none of these are my clients. These people. If I um, to work with Funerary Capricans, and and I talked about a client, and I first said out and said, "Mary, this and this and this, I haven't." So I'm okay with it. But to like I said, my voice is changing and I've worked it out last night because it's really, it's really weird that to me because you think for someone it's meant to get cobra, we have these symptoms, but it's reverse. When I put it on, that's when it happens. And it does feel like, I don't know how to explain it, it's almost like it's puffy. But it's warm too, and that's, I didn't think of that net to now. That's for warm, and this is after all the mass. Um, and you'll probably you'll probably think this is weird and mad of me doing it, but you watch. Um, I'm probably not the only one having this issue, because it is material, and we have heard about material can affect your skin, and people are allergic to it. Um, cotton's a perfect one for it. So, what I'm just trying to say, I bet you none of you thought about, as a media, thought about the re reincarnation of it. So, how, uh, this is, I must admit, this is the first time I wore it yesterday at the, at the job interview, and I thought I'd be fine. I must admit, I, I thought I was going to be fine, and when I took it off, oh, my face feels different. Now I did thought it may be connected because I'm not used to it, but it's not because um, I wore it today. Like I said, I've got the picture like I showed you it. Um, I wore the I wore it, and I get the same reaction. Um, I, 
I was doing something and my voice changed too and I can hear it now it's so changing so it's kind of that kind of stuff but how I look at this it this it's a bit this is probably a minor incident all right but imagine if someone out there had a major incident with this um up to a point they needed the epipen they needed an epipen for it have you ever thought about that especially if you're a person like me you did not know that you were allergic to it yeah um I don't think I'm going to sue anyone over this but people can get sued over this um legally because it's a media thing you have no right to do stuff like this um the only thing I can say um because and here and it's really funny about it all because I'm watching like you all know I do like watching NICS and it's really interesting I'm watching it and the first thing that came to my head is with it this, this episode it's amazing how we get people outsiders believe in everything what the media said, says we do like we don't think about the reaction towards things like we just think oh yeah because the news say it's because the prime minister's on the news it must be true um t and i don't know how to do this but now media can change things you know the kids cut and edit stuff move things i mean um chop um, Photoshop, you you look at that, it's amazing what media, uh, what Photoshop can do. So you take that into the media and you just kind of 100 times that, you'd be amazed what the media can do. Um, it's just a perfect one where they're talking about the missing boy and they actually ch took the boy's head off, just in the, in the, for, in, um, on the media and put it on another photo with a kid with another kid's photo and lucky the guy who saw this he he showed it to people so they can see it like they he kind of i'll call it a sandwich photo where you put one photo over another and you can see the difference of it and it was so like so that's what I'm saying to you, um, and this is why I'm doing this, because you can hear it now, my voice is to change. I do change, my voice does change, not only when it comes to this kind of voice, but it's more when I'm serious. I'm, I mean, I am being serious, but not serious where like, I'm creating or I'm suing you kind of stuff, it's nothing like that. This is just information stuff, so it's not that serious. And I just thought, this is why I wanted to do this because I think people need to look at their reactions. Um, what you do, do make us different. And that's another thing I want to pass on to you. Together. It's not about you, not about me. And it's interesting. Um, will I? No. I would say the person's name, a person could there be, um, said this to me. Um, I want to say where she's from, it's from, she was helping me look for a job, right? And she said, it's not about you. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I thought I'd just leave that with you. Tell me what you think, because I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is bullshit. No, I'm going to travel for this road, but it is bullshit. Um, um, and that's why I thought I'd share this with you. And I hope you can see how my face is changing because of the mask. Like I said, I'm very lucky. I'm not hyper, hyper sensitive to the point where I have to use an EpiPen. Um, I am very lucky with it. But it does affect people. Um, as a media, I'm doing this because I think you have to learn with your outcome of things. You do need to look at the outcome of things. Um, yeah, every time I look at someone related to media, doesn't matter who they are, I'm thinking to myself, you're going to learn. And that's, how, that's all I can say with it. But this has gone long enough, so I'm going to leave it at this. Um, I know half of you guys want to watch what through it. 
but I know half of you guys will because half of you guys know me and yeah so I'm just hoping this will teach you for the next time you put something out there okay really think about the outcome of things um perfect example the people who do believe in COVID-19 think of how thick that they are no, let's think about that um yeah that's all I got to say. So, yeah, um, see you later. Um, and if you're on YouTube, I'll see you for the next person. So, bye.